Ask the African is a short video series featuring people from African ancestry articulating point of view about some of the most pressing issues facing the African world and the African continent. It is in part a response to the self-proclaimed Western experts who believe they know what is best for Africa. It is yet another way for people throughout the globe to hear what we are saying about what the solutions are in regard to the issues we face in Africa and what are the prescriptions for bringing us out from uh, under the yoke of conflict, dependency and impoverishment. We believe that the conflict mineral approach, which argues that some minerals fuel conflict on the African continent, is fundamentally and irrevocably flawed. In fact, should you take a cursory look at it, one should see that the conflict mineral approach serves three key aims. One, as a cover of U.S. and Western mining interests. Two, as a cover of U.S. allies in Central Africa that have blood of the Congolese on their hands, particu particularly Paul Kagame of Rwanda and Museveni of Uganda. Three, it advances the further militarization of the African continent by calling on counterinsurgency and more military support for authoritarian regime uh, in Rwanda and in Uganda. Yes, they can fuel the conflict. And the conflict in the Congo at its core is a resource war. However, the conflict mineral approach is not the solution to the resource war in the Congo. Certainly, uh, there are other flaws, and uh, we'll mention a few. Uh, the conflict mineral approach aims to end the conflict, yet we know that the fastest and expeditious way to end the conflict in the Congo is through diplomatic means. So the U.S. actually can take the lead in the diplomacy work inside the Congo, and it can be accelerated if President Obama and the government of the U.K. lead by creating a political framework that will bring the forces are fighting Rwanda, Uganda, the rebel forces inside the Congo, and the Congolese are uh, government to the table and stop this nonsense. Too many people are dying. Now, the second uh, flaw in that approach is that the conflict mineral approach speaks only of the east of the Congo. Now, I know the, the people in the east suffer tremendously. The violence is so acute there. But what's taking place in Kinshasa has direct connection to what's taking place in Goma. So what's happening in the West is inextricably linked to what's happening in the East of Congo. The third one is that uh, the conflict mineral approach is birthed out of a uh, pathological uh, voyeurism um, that peers into this text, this complex geopolitical uh, drama and look at it through a genocide atrocity prism which has a, an, an obsessive, I'm telling you, an obsessive look at only the rebel groups inside the Congo. And is this approach is definitely silent on Paul Kagame of Rwanda, Yoroi Museveni of Uganda, the invasions of 1968 supported by the United States inside Congo, and as well as the continued support of rebel uh, proxy militia groups and the looting of Congo's resources. Now, the fourth uh, flaw that I see just uh, looking at that approach is that the conflict mineral approach is dead silent on U.S. corporate interests and U.S. corporations inside the Congo, plundering the resources. The list can be found at congoweek.org, conflictminerals.org, and as well as friendsofthecongo.org. The companies looting the Congo are very well known. And the fifth one, the conflict mineral approach does not speak about resource sovereignty. Why is that so important? 
This has been the core challenge of the Congolese for 125 years. It's always been who is going to control Congo's resources and for whose benefit. Now, in 1960, our first elected prime minister, Patrice Lumumba, said, I want the resources of the Congo to benefit the Congolese people. Within weeks, he was deposed. Within months, he was uh, assassinated by uh, the support of Western powers, particularly the United States and Belgium at the time. Now, after that, to the chagrin of all the Congolese, the United States backed a dictator in his second coup in 1965. They backed him for not 10 years, not 20 years, but three decades. Supported Mobutu for three de decades where he looted uh, the resources of the Congo and helped the U.S. combat the uh, fight during the Cold War. Now, when the U.S. got tired of Mobutu, they supported an invasion of the Congo in 1996 and 98 and we saw how Rwanda and Uganda unleash the estimated 6 million deaths inside the Congo due to those inventions. So you see, the core challenge of the Congolese is resource sovereignty and the conflict mineral approach does not speak about that. What is at stake in the Congo today? is what was at stake in the Congo in 1885, right after the Berlin Conference. What is at stake in the Congo today is what was at stake in the Congo in 1961, right after the assassination of uh, Patrice Emery Lumumba, our first elected prime minister. And at stake is, who is going to control Congo's resources and for whose benefit? This is a crucial moment for the people of the Congo and Africa. The central question is, Will we sit idly by and allow the U.S. and the West to maintain hegemony on the Congolese people, on us, over our lives and our resources, especially through its soft powers of so-called humanitarian institutions and think tanks out of Washington, D.C., who continue to advocate for policies that maintain U.S. corporate dominance over our lives? Or will we assert control over our own affairs and articulate to the global community the manner in which they can optimally interact with us? And I know we can get the world to be our, at our side, as uh, Patrice Lumumba stated well. We are not alone. Africa, Asia, and free and liberated people from every corner of the world will always be found at the side of the Congolese. And I know we have many people around the world who want peace, justice, and stability in our beautiful Congo.